hello my dream bees let's talk about some mindfulness tips let's go in to ways that we can really value our money and our time i don't want us to think about minimalism in the mainstream kind of way of just getting rid of everything you own and trying to put everything you own into a backpack i don't think that that works for everyone i just want to talk about ways that we can really cherish our our objects that we own cherish our items cherish our money that we have worked so hard to earn so let's just brainstorm these ideas together and i'll share some things that have worked for me that maybe if you try might work for you so the first topic that I had the hardest time with kind of sizing down and prioritizing was beauty products. Now, especially because I just love taking care of my skin. Uh, everyone loves to do their nighttime routine. I know I love buying and testing out the latest creams and serums and, you know, gua sha's and all those types of things. I found that accumulating so many items for my my beauty routine was just a little bit unnecessary and at times kind of illogical. And what I mean by that was by having like 10 different products for my routine, I actually felt that it wasn't really making a huge difference on my skin, whether I was using two to three products or 10 to 12. I found that the biggest impact was my stress levels especially if we're talking about like my face and my skin, if I was having, you know, red spots or breakouts that was mostly tied to my stress levels, my hormone, the time of my cycle, and even just like how hydrated I was or what I was eating, that was impacting my skin a lot more than how many products I was putting on my face. And that can be so like funny to say because I love when people you know, bring out all these new ideas, new under eye cream, uh, you know, even like primers for makeup and, and just all these types of items that have a specific purpose. I actually found that by having one or two creams that were kind of all purpose, I was really getting the same or almost better results. So my tip for you here is try to find one product in your beauty routine that can be multi-purpose. It will save you so much money. That is probably the biggest thing. You will save so much money not spending, you know, 10 to $20 on each individual product of your routine and to just having one nice overall product that can do multiple steps. So me personally, I have this ginormous pot. It's a mixture of beeswax, uh, shea butter, I believe that there is, I think this one might have some aloe vera in it. And it's just this, it's all natural pot of mixed butters and oils. And it can be just from like your hair to your face, to your body, head to toe, all purpose cream. And I find that after I you know, use a gentle cleanser to wash my face, I put a little bit of toner and then I use this multi-purpose cream and I'm set. I use it in the morning, I can use it at night. And the fact that there are so many different um, like ingredients in there that are good for so many purposes, I use it for winter, spring, summer, and fall. So it's, it's just a tip. Certain brands will work for certain people, but if you can find an all-purpose cream that works for you, I just think it will save you so much time. Even if you're traveling, this will save you so much space in your carry-on. Another really hard item that I was having trouble with sizing down was lip balm and lip products. I am such a sucker for any lip balm. I love the packaging. I love the, the facility of just throwing it in my bags. I love having one in my pocket, one in my jacket, one beside the bed, one in the bathroom. And I, as I started to just be more mindful of how much I was using this product, I was realizing that maybe it was a little irrational the way I was using lip balm. And 
this can be tricky because if it brings you so much joy, I know that there are certain items that we just love so much, even though we know it's irrational, we're not gonna stop because it brings us so much joy, then that is totally okay. I'm not saying throw out all the products that you love. I am just saying, try to look at it in a different perspective. If you can simplify this idea or this part of your life, try it. Maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. So the lip balm scenario for me ended up just being kind of excessive where I would apply, you know, maybe eight to 10 times a day my lip balm and it was really drying out my lips. And even if I would use the most natural, you know, a beeswax lip balm or an aloe vera, um, I still felt that because I was applying it so much, it was not benefiting my lips or my skin at all. So at one point I just completely stopped using it, started to see if my lips actually needed it, and then I was just more in tuned with my body. So now I can really tell when my lips are dry, if I just need a glass of water, or if I can just apply a little bit of lip balm. But I'm not just doing it automatically on robot mode just because I'm so used to doing it. And now I definitely try not to keep it by my bed. Normally, I don't need it before sleeping, even though before I would do it just constantly. And especially not before eating meals because you're just gonna be eating all of the product anyway. It is so unnecessary. I find this topic kind of funny because I love plants. I'm sure um, so many people understand that feeling of going to the garden store and just buying all these brand new plants for your home and getting creative with it, buying different textured plants, ones that look good, ones that are big, ones that are small. It can be such a rush. It's so much fun, but I, was maybe spending so much money and time on buying new plants that I was not being focused enough on the plants that I already owned. And this just comes from the mind, the mindset of always kind of searching for the next new thing. Sometimes in, in everyday life, we can get kind of bored and we just search for something new to bring some excitement into our lives. And I really want to try focusing now on the stuff that I already own and allowing those things to be cherished and loved to their fullest before I need to seek some new joy and excitement in the next new thing. Really putting more energy into the plants that you own. So really taking care to water them, watch how well they thrive in one room compared to the other room. Do they like to be inside? Do they prefer to be outside if you have a, a little garden or a, a terrace. I recently got into propagating my plants where if I had this beautiful plant that I love so much, I would just cut off one stem of the leaf, place it in water, change the water every two, three days, just allow that oxygen to thrive in the water. And then the same plant that I loved, it would be like having a baby plant and just that connection alone would make me so happy, almost more happy than if I bought a new plant. And it also, the more energy and love I put into those old plants, the less they would die and the less I would have to throw them away, needing to buy new plants. Next topic is books. Books and reading. These are oh, just like some of the things that bring me so much joy. I love reading. But if you're someone that likes to constantly read the next new thing, if you finish books easily and you like that feeling of reading many books within a month, within a year, then you probably spend a lot of your money and a lot of your time on new books. Now, this is just food for thought, but I have recently gotten into rereading my old books and I find that so special. I love the feeling of having, not only remembering the story that you fell in love with in the first place, but also remembering where you were at that place in time when you read that book for the first time. And that I find is just so like 
just satisfying nostalgia where you remember, oh, I read this book when I was in high school. Oh, I remember what was going on at that time. Oh, maybe I didn't really see this part of the book because now I'm so much older. Oh, I remember, you know, my, my sister passed me this book or I remember reading this with my best friend and then just having this, you know, this plethora of ideas and memories and reflection all combined. So that can be really special, especially before buying a new book. Go reread maybe a couple of your favorites and it'll just make you appreciate the things that you own in such a different way and it makes you appreciate your past in such a different way. Another way to save money and time on books is to really share with your friends. So maybe you like to join a book club, maybe your family is also into reading. Once you finished a book, try to give that new book to one of your dearest family or friends. One of your dearest family members or friends. See what they think, ask them questions, and then have them give you one of their favorite books and kind of recycle books in that way. So that's definitely an idea as opposed to always going back to buy something new, just kind of trying to share with your friends and make connections from sharing. Especially if you're passionate about reading and the person you're sharing with is passionate about reading, you can just have so much more to talk about, so many more ideas that can come from that. More about money and budgeting. And this is something that I try really, really, really hard to keep up with, but it's not very easy. If I have this new idea or something that I really, really want to purchase, especially something that is new, as opposed to, you know, just saying, oh, I'm gonna wait a week, see if I remember, if I still really want it, then I'm gonna buy it. I try to wait till I'm going to get that next paycheck in order to even think about purchasing this item. Because I find that if I wait a whole month and I'm starting the next month with, you know, a fresh paycheck, then I'm able to think about things differently. Let's say it's the end of the month now and I buy a new item and I'm just really reducing the money that I'm going to have for this month. I'd rather wait till my next paycheck, give me like a full one whole month to think about it. And if I still really need it, if I still really want it, then I feel as if I've earned it, as if I've worked that whole month. I've really worked on it. I've thought about this object in my mind for a month and I've said, okay, if I work super hard at my job, if I give myself the patience of purchasing this item, I will get it next month at my next paycheck. And this is just a personal way that I put it, but maybe you have, you know, kind of an idea of how you can budget and give yourself an objective to earn that item that you want. And this kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and my parents would say, okay, if you do really good on your report card or on your exams, we will get you like that thing that you wanted. We will get you that little present. And it might not work for everyone. I personally do love a good surprise, a good gift. So I just love that feeling of, oh, I worked so hard. I earned it. Now I'm, I have faith in myself. I trust myself and I'm going to treat myself. And hopefully by waiting that extra time, there's certain moments that you will forget the item that you wanted, that you don't really need it, and your perspective will just kind of be more intentional. I find that there's such a rush in getting into a hobby, something that you know nothing about, and having to learn and focus and concentrate. And this topic is very positive. Of course, it's amazing to love learning and to get into new things, but I have learned that sometimes that need to try something new and that need to, you know, let's say you want to get into knitting. So you go out and you buy knitting needles and you buy all of the yarn and you have just purchased a hundred dollars worth of knitting supplies. And now you're going to be obsessed with it for one week. And then you'll, you might never do it again, as opposed to jumping from one hobby to the next, 
if that's something that you do. I know that is something that I do, especially if I see a YouTube video of someone doing this amazing, very like cute new craft, I just immediately buy it and I want to get started. I have learned that focusing on the hobbies that I already love and trying to perfect those hobbies and not in a way that has to be perfect, but in a way that I am perfecting my skill, my talent and my craft has made me just a little bit more satisfied and fulfilled in myself. I know it's amazing to learn new things. I, I know we all sometimes don't do hobbies to be good at them. And that's totally okay. I don't think we should be good at everything, but there is something very satisfying about doing a hobby and sticking with it and be dedicating, be dedicated to this practice, just like your yoga practice or your spiritual practice, being dedicated to a hobby or another practice that you love, like sketching, drawing, or painting, you can end up really hitting a new potential. You can be accessing parts of yourself because you're really going back into it and you're practicing as opposed to doing a million things, as opposed to always jumping to the next thing you kind of always recenter yourself with a couple of things or maybe just one thing. I find that mentally it's so comforting to always go back to that one thing. So me, I love painting and I know that when I set up an easel and I practice and if I force myself to do it, you know, once every day, even if what I make is so small, it really makes my brain and my body feel so comfortable because I'm going back to one practice. And it's that same feeling I get from my yoga practice where you just go back to it. You don't have to ask any questions. It's natural, you just go back into it. There is also just something so special about knowing that you have this skill, you have this talent. And it's not a talent that you have to compare to other people. It's not a talent saying that it has to be your profession. It's just something that brings you joy and it's your skill and it's your unique way of doing this. And this lesson is what I learned from one of my yoga teachers. And she told me yoga teachers nowadays are always trying to do everything. They're trying to be good at everything, but have they ever just tried to specialize on that one thing that they're good at, that one thing that they love? These are just different ways to look at some of the parts of us at some of these parts of our lives and I hope that it just gives you a different perspective. Maybe it inspires you to, you know, find things and values that are important to you. Why do you want to save more money and more time? What do you want to put that money and time towards? That's all I have to say about this. I hope this gives you a new perspective a new feeling about how you want to spend your hard-earned time and money and that you really just take all those things that you love and you cherish them and you set your mind on them. So thank you so much for being here. If you liked this different kind of video, just more talks on mindfulness and yoga philosophy, please comment down below or how are ways that you have saved your time and money in the past year? Or what are goals that you're trying to do for the future? Thank you so much for being here. I wish you a lovely day. Namaste.